I'm addicted and expensive. Byron Wilcock. And I'm watching WGS TV. Welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer. I am Double B Billy Boudreaux, and this is going to be my Raw review for the week of February 13th, 2012. We open up this week's Monday Night Raw with Kane sending an ominous message that somebody is going to be riding in an ambulance tonight. Yeah, great way to build up until your ambulance match with Cena this Sunday. Can you guys kind of sense the sarcasm I have in my voice when it comes to what I just said? Really? About less than a two-minute, three-minute promo at best? To have King put over the fact that someone's going to ride in an ambulance tonight? Really? I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with that logic, you know. But then again, I didn't realize... That we're gonna the next it was gonna lead into the next segment, which was gonna be an elimination chamber debate. What in the freaking hell? Now I, I want to say this: CM Punk, great. Jericho, great as always. Um, Kofi Kingston kind of hit on something, you know. The, a lot of people have been overlooking him as of late, and you know that could possibly be a mistake, and that could lead to. You know, Kofi Kingston starting to shine. He was a great Intercontinental and United States Champion. I would not, to be rather honest, you know, it, it, do I feel he's ready for a championship the caliber of the WWE Championship? I don't know. Um, Miz, I think he's trying to overwork it just a little bit. And then we have R Truth, who thought he was running for an, elect an electoral position. You know, thought he was running for office. And that was the reason for the debate. And then he mentioned something about trading Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero to SmackDown for Hornswoggle and a box of spiders. And then he would go on to smash the spiders. Ugh. Just threw up a little bit in my mouth. It makes spiders stew. Ugh. Why? Why? And that's all I want to know is why did they go that route? I, I know they're trying to make Archie look crazy with the little Jimmy, but Spider still really ugh. nobody in Louisiana. Nobody in Louisiana would eat that. I promise you. You know we can fricassee something. You know we can pretty much uh, fry and fricassee anything, but spiders are something we won't touch. I'll tell you something, spiders is something I won't touch. But, um, anyway. Um, this leads up to the match with CM Punk and Kofi Kingston, which is technically... Well, not, not really, because he was involved in a six-man tag, but um, technically his first singles match on Monday Night Raw in about a year and a half. For Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho and Kofi Kingston. Uh, both guys look really strong. Um, I thought it was a really strong opening match for their, the program tonight. Um, but um, oh, um, by the way, the rating. Uh, I'm going to give the debate. I'm going to say a four out of five. I thought it was entertaining, hilarious, and I thought it was kind of a great way for them to build up into the Elimination Chamber pay per view uh, this Sunday, and especially for the Raw match. But as far as Chris Jericho and Kofi Kingston was concerned, I, um, Kofi really looked strong in this match. Jericho, great as always. What I really... One of my favorite spots of the match is when Kofi did a springboard and they and Jericho countered it into the walls of Jericho. That was done beautifully on both parts. Kofi Kingston and Jericho, they pulled that one off magnificently. You know, it's not very often we see a, a great counter, you know, of that kind of magnitude, you know, from a springboard. But Jericho, you know, Jericho's timing was perfect. Kofi Kingston's timing was perfect. I thought the match was great. Uh, Jericho gets the win, which it's, you know, 
huge, you know, f to get that all-important momentum and, uh, you know, to pull it off with a really great match, you know, really strong match. You know, even in a losing effort, you know, Kofi Kingston still came out looking strong because it was a strong showing against a, a veteran like Chris Jericho, a f uh, the first ever undisputed uh, World of Weight champion. So, I'm going to give the match a 4 out of 5. I thought it was that good of a match, you know. I was thoroughly entertained. I thought it was great. So, it deserve, and I feel it deserves a 4 out of 5. So, that's what I'm going to give it, a 4 out of 5. Um, one thing to mention about the, uh, the show tonight, apparently, Zack Ryder is there to talk to Eve. And, you know, since it's Valentine's Day is coming up, why well, it's a holiday I've never really celebrated. But anyway, apparently he wants to, uh, you know, give flowers and candy to Eve, which is all understandable. You know, Valentine's Day, you know, and Zack Ryder's kind of, you know, in a sense, courting Eve Torres these past few weeks, or months, rather. You know, he's been doing it for the past couple of months. So, um, so John Cena advised uh, Ryder to stay in his locker room because every time Ryder comes to Raw, he gets hurt by Kane, and pretty much he's right on the ball, especially at the Royal Rumble too. Then we go up to a big match, which was really uh, basically a build, a build off from what I don't know what, I'm, what I mean when I say that, but anyway, uh, you know, it kind of leads into uh, what happened on. Uh, the end of Friday Night Smackdown. I know I didn't put up a Smackdown review. I do apologize about that, guys. But, you know, at the end of Friday Night Smackdown, you know, we had a, um, a battle between Randy Orton and The Big Show after Randy Orton got disqualified by uh, the referee in his match against Daniel Bryan. But, you know, it led up to a big, uh, big fight, a big brawl on the outside, and it ended up with Big Show choke slamming. Randy Orton in the ring, and it leads into this match here on Monday Night Raw between these two. Um, one thing to make no uh, note of, uh, Michael Cole, you make my freaking head hurt. I mean, seriously. Seriously, you make my absolutely freaking head hurt. Okay? Uh, first off, he he's coming out and he's bashing. Daniel Bryan, you know, because he uh, supposedly hates him, and then as soon as Bryan sits down next to the commentary's table, where he's kind of in an earshot of uh, Michael Cole, Michael Cole starts kissing his ass left and right, and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? In a sense, I can kind of see that, you know, Michael Cole pulling off a cowardly heel thing, you know, you know, as soon as the guy, you know, as soon as he's faced with confrontation, he's gonna turn around and start kissing ass. You know, just so he doesn't get involved in, uh, physically with someone. But and then as soon as, uh, well, let me talk a little bit more about the match first before I talk about with Daniel Bryan. Um, I thought it was a great match with Randy Orton in the big show. Um, the only thing that's going to keep it from getting a really good score, I'm, uh, the score of the match is going to be a 3.5 out of 5. The only thing that kept it from becoming a really good, good score. The only thing that kept it out of the fours, in my opinion, was, uh, the, there was a botch with the RKO, and even the crowd recognized it, if you guys remember, you know, whenever somebody in ECW messed up or had a botch in the ring, you know, just think back to that familiar chant. They were chanting that towards uh, Randy Orton in the Big Show on that, uh, RKO botch. You know, I, I, I could kind of sense, I don't, I don't, not exactly sure what happened, you know, maybe Big Show took that, went down too early, or Randy Orton just, you know, forgot uh, that, you know, the spot call for an RKO, and, and instead, uh, you know, just slipped and stayed standing up while Big Show was trying to sell the RKO. But, uh, Daniel Bryan then comes in and, and knocks Randy Orton with the Tyler belt, causing a disqualification, and then knocks the Big Show out, uh, and that's when Michael Cole you know, switches uh, gears and starts bashing Daniel Bryan again. Again, it's making my freaking head hurt trying to understand this heel gimmick with Michael Cole. It's just getting so friggin' over the top. They need to stop it. You can't have your play-by-play -play commentator as an over-the-top heel. You just can't. I'm a commentator for GCW. You'll never hear me go heel because it's stupid to have your play-by-play -play guy go heel. It makes no friggin' sense. 
but the match gets, uh, in essence, the match gets a 3.5 out of 5. Um, next up, we had, you know, what everybody was waiting for, and that was the, uh, the segment involving Shawn Michaels, the return of the Heartbreak Kid, the icon, the showstopper, but he's no longer Mr. Main Event, he's, uh, Mr. Hall of Fame. And, quoted from him on Monday Night Raw tonight. And, you know, he wanted to call Triple H back out there, a little bit of a DX reunion, yep. Yeah. You know, before CM Punk, they had this, and this stood for DX. I'm dead serious, guys. And, you know, they were basically trying to, you know, HBK was trying to, you know, get into the head of Triple H and, and whatnot to try to get him into accepting the challenge, you know, of The Undertaker, and, you know, it just went back and forth. You know, I thought it was a fantastic segment. Um, the reason why I'm not going to get into it too much right here on the Raw Review, because... Uh, I'm I'm really putting it in, in my head together right now as we speak of setting up a discussion video about this in subject alone, you know, with uh, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and The the Undertaker, especially that vignette. Uh, I thought that was a really good idea, the placement of that vignette, because we all knew Undertaker had cut his hair, you know, because of his uh, wifey, uh, Michelle McCool, and, Hey, if that girl told me to cut my hair, I'd freaking cut it in, in like three seconds. Like, <laughs> you like it, honey? Um, <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Um, I thought it was a good way to, um, to actually, you know, give The Undertaker an excuse, you know, a reason to have his hair short. Because if he just appeared as the dead man with his hair short, nobody knew what, what you know, what to make of it. I mean, why is The Undertaker back up with shorter hair the only time he's ever had short hair is with the American badass gimmick. You know, he's never had short hair with the dead man gimmick. So using this vignette to have the Undertaker cut his hair, I thought that was brilliant, a brilliant idea. So next time people see the Undertaker, they're going to expect the short hair because we saw him cut his hair in the or his wig hair, probably, in the vignette tonight on Monday Night Raw. Uh, I, I really thought this segment was really well done. Again, you got three guys who know what they're doing. Five out of five on this segment. You can't. Get, if I can go higher, I would. I would say ten out of five. But that's how thoroughly interesting, and that's one of the reasons why I really want to make a discussion video. You know, discussing. You know. Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and The Undertaker, and hopefully you, uh, when I get it up tomorrow, guys, you know, if because I'm really contemplating whether or not to go through with it, but if I do go through with it, guys, I really want to get you know, everyone's input on it, so be sure you, you know, keep your eyes out to see if I do post that up. So, again, 5 out of 5 on the segment. Now we have uh, R-Truth and Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a lot of the singles matches tonight were to hype up the Elimination Chamber, and uh, I, I really thought it was a good... It was an okay match. I was really surprised at the fact that they uh, they had R-Truth you know, catch Dolph Ziggler off guard when he was doing his sit-ups. Again, Dolph Ziggler, I think he's just ripping off Scott Steiner because Steiner was doing the push-ups to show off, and now Ziggler's doing... Uh, pull-ups, or whatever the hell you call it. I haven't done one in quite some time, as you guys can probably tell. Anyway, uh, in the middle of one of those uh, pull-ups, if that's, yeah, pull-ups, uh, or sit-ups, rather, sit-ups! Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I can't believe I did that. I apologize, guys. I apologize. I was going through all my heads. I'm like, what the hell, what the hell am I saying? It's sit-ups. It was sit-ups. I'm sorry, my mind just went, I apologize about that, guys. I know a lot of people out there are gonna, you know, definitely get on my case about this. I, again, I, I am human, guys. I am human. I am prone to mistakes. But uh, anyway, while Dolph Ziggler was doing the sit-ups, 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 you know, our truth rolls him up with a small package and gets the three count. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the match a 3 out of 5 just based on the fact I fucked up by saying pull-ups and instead of sit-ups. I'm like, why? And then we had uh, Tamina 
Snuka. She's been using her full name now, Tamina Snuka, and uh, Brie Bella. And they had Beth Phoenix on commentary, and they also made the announcement that at the Elimination Chamber, the Divas title going to be on the line, Tamina Snuka and Beth Phoenix. And I guess with just, you know, l less than one week's time until Elimination Chamber, they they were having uh, Beth Phoenix out on commentary, Tamina in the ring against Brie Bella to try to put over their match at uh, the pay-per-view this Sunday. Uh, Tamina Snuka got the win, by the way. And then we had... Uh, what followed next was rather odd. To, to just bear with me for this. Um, they were previewing, or yeah, they were kind of previewing the uh, going through the rocks. Uh, you know, he, in releasing of the uh, the movie Journey to the Mysterious Island. You know, going to all the premieres and whatnot, and then when the, they were going to go to Cena, and they're going to have Cena give his response. We hear someone screaming. Evidently, turned out to be Eve. Cain throws Eve, or chases Eve, rather, and uh, to the ambulance, and Cain uh, had just closed the door. Cena attacks Cain, tries to get Eve to open the door to get out. Cain then uh, attacks Cena, uh, hightails it into the driver's seat of the ambulance. The door flies open. Eve jumps into uh, Cena's arm, and then as soon as the ambulance leaves, no, and, and this is the part that really started to screw with my head. I don't know if, if it did it to you guys or not, because I have no idea, you know, wh why the hell or wh where the hell they're going with this, but they had Eve Torres playing a lip lock on John Cena, and then they pan over and Zack Ryder has watched the whole freaking thing. I'm like, what in the... Mm -hmm. are they doing? I'm like, Eve Torres planting one on Cena and having Ryder... Watch it now. Actually, the Slimy Man Ashley, who, by the way, does have uh, his review of TNA against all odds up here on the channel. Be sure you guys check that out. And uh, he made reference to the fact that one of the ways that, you know, he perceives for them to have Cena embrace the hate, you know, Kane's plan, and uh, Cena kind of, well, let me go ahead and get to the next match, or the next part, because then uh, they come back from commercial break. And Eve is trying to explain herself to Zack Ryder, who is, uh, by all intents and purposes, pissed off. Um, so, you know, after you know watching Eve uh, play tonsil hockey with John Cena, and then she uttered the words, "You know, I, you know, I like you a lot, but I just want to be friends." Now, me not having been on a date in my single life, even I know that that key factor, that key word. You know, whenever a girl says, I just want to be friends, translates into, I think you're cool, but I'm dumping you. And I could be wrong with what I'm saying, but, you know, when because I really don't have that much experience. In fact, I don't have any experience in that kind of field. But, um, that's the kind of way it looked. It kind of looked like, you know, Eve likes... Well, let me put it to you like this, is the way um, I look at it. You know, it's going to seem a little childish, but again, with me having zero experience in this field, it's the best way that I can kind of interpret it. Eve likes Zack Ryder, but she doesn't like like him, is the way they're putting it out, and... So the, that, it was a bizarre segment to say the least. Um, just for the fact it held my interest the entire time, it's going to get a four out of five. I really don't know what else to say because even I, I that you know after I watched it happen, I told Ashley and said, "Ash, I don't know how to freaking respond to that. I don't. I really don't." But um, oh, sorry, table moved. Apologize. But um, next up was the uh, the build main event, which was uh, CM Punk and The Miz, and uh, any match or any pay per view or any show. This has a a, a high star quality rating of five out of five, and that's what it's going to get because it was that good. And uh, but one thing I have to call Ashley on: uh, we were both expecting some interference from Chris Jericho, and 
it never happened. It never happened. You know, I think, you know, if they really wanted to, you know, build into this rivalry with CM Punk and Chris Jericho, you know, they did a good bit of it on the debate earlier in the show, or the opening of the show, rather. But, uh, you know, my thoughts were, if they were really going to build into a, a, a rivalry with Punk and Jericho, you know, why not have Jericho come out and interfere in this match? But it didn't happen, and to be honest with you, I'm glad it, it, it didn't happen because it kind of would have ruined a really good match between Punk and Miz, and that's what it was tonight. Punk and Miz had a five-star match. It gets a five out of five from me because I thought it was really great. And uh, I might be looking into maybe getting a CM Punk t-shirt. And if I do, guys, I will have an open... And, uh, you know, when I get it, I'll open it here on here on uh, WGS TV because I opened up my, my Beer Money t-shirt on here and that got quite a bit of attention. So... I'm thinking maybe, if, you know, if I order CM Punk's latest t-shirt and open it on here, it might get some attention on here as well. You never know. You never know. So, uh, CM Punk ends up getting the win in this match and gets that, just like Jericho did, gets that important win and that, that momentum build into the pay, uh, Elimination Chamber match, that which was going to be happening this weekend. And then we end the show with Cena, you know, trying to come out and, you know, explain the awkwardness of what happened back there with the ambulance. Then Zack Ryder comes out. It's really hard to kind of gauge what they're doing. You know, maybe it's possible that they're, they're trying to have all of Cena's friends turn against him. You know, he said, oh, turn all of his friends against him. Even Cena mentioned it in the promo in, uh, on the microphone. You know, all of his friends were turning against him. The fans are turning against him. Again, why people are booing this man, even though he is a face and he does a lot of charity work, I still don't understand. But, um... Then we have, you know, Cena taking off his shirt, and uh, Ryder tries to punch Cena. Cena blocks it and, you know, pulls his punch. You know, kind of know what I'm saying. It's like, I'm about to punch it, but I'm not. And he pulls it, and Ryder falls back and uh, heads back up the ramp on crutches. And, by the way, he he gets back in his wheelchair. There was something I was going to say, but I thought better of it. I'm not going to say it. And, um... It was something somebody said on Twitter about Zack Ryder and the Great Collie. That's all I'm going to say. Um, then we had King come out and cut a promo saying that uh, Cena actually did embrace the hate because he took the love of uh, his best friend's life away from him. Which we all know that really didn't happen. And then King comes out. It was basically a promo leading up to the ambulance match, and then Kane comes out after the promo's over in the wheelchair and throws Ryder in the wheelchair off the ramp. Now, you can tell the the, the place where he landed was mad. You know, WWE really didn't do a good job of trying to conceal that fact that that place was matted. But, you know, think back to that, you know, you know if I had access to that, you know, that footage, you know, of Ryder in slow motion going off the ramp, you know, I, pay, I paid close attention to the left foot of Zack Ryder. Um, I don't know if it's possible to kind of injure your ankle or, or your foot, rather, you know, if you're coming down that hard and fast, you know, on a mat the way that he did. It, it kind of looked like he kind of la landed kind of gimp. You know, they kept showing it over in slow motion, and I kept paying attention to that left foot of Zack Ryder. It, it could be nothing. It could be just me. It could be just me, but it was something that I picked up on. It was something I noticed. You know, his uh, foot kind of landed wrong. You know, we did see, uh, you know, John Cena throw up that symbol. You know, that, you know that's the symbol that, you know, they give when someone's really hurt. You know, and I don't know if that was kayfabe or not. You know, maybe Cena noticed, you know, that something 
didn't go quite right with the landing. But, you know, again, it could be me. I could be making, you know, I could be making something out of nothing, you know, when it comes to Zack Ryder. I could be making something out of nothing when it comes to, you know, the way he landed, you know, with his left foot and, and the way it did. It, it did look kind of bad. It did, it really did look, I don't know, if, like I said, you know, I've never been thrown off a, a stage like that on time that, you know, free, via a wheelchair, but the way his foot and his ankle looked, you know, maybe it was, you know, designed to look bad, but maybe it wasn't really that bad after all. You know, again, maybe, like I said, maybe I'm just making a, a mountain out of a molehill. Maybe, you know, maybe it's just, you know, something I saw and, you know, like I said, making something out of nothing. But it's just something I wanted to, you know, pass along to you guys. Um, the ending segment gets a four out of a five for weirdness, you know, and awkwardness. So... That's how the end of the show uh, for Monday Night Raw. Like, I, you know, very interesting Raw tonight. I said that on Facebook. You know, very interesting Raw. Um, again, I, I don't know how to respond, you know, thoroughly, you know, to the situation with Cena, Eve Torres, Zack Ryder, and Kane from Monday Night Raw. It, it was that weird, you know. I, I did not expect to see uh, Eve Torres, uh, you know, want to, I'm not going to say what Ashley said, because it's kind of a little inappropriate, but uh, basically, you know, check, uh, you know, check John Cena to see if he still had his tonsils with her tongue. And uh, <laughs> I never thought I would use that analogy ever in a video or in a real life situation. But, uh, again, you know, if you look at it at the perspective of Kane trying to get Cena to embrace the hate, he would have to have, you know, his friends turn against him. And what better way to get his, you know, his closest friend, Zack Ryder, to turn against him by watching him, well, uh, by having his, the girl he's been courting the past couple of months play a lip lock. Uh, on you. Other than that, uh, it, it was something that I really didn't see coming. You know, I, you know, you could see Cena saving Eve, you know, and being, you know, thankful for, you know, saying, you know, thank you and hugging him. Uh, the lip lock, I didn't freaking see coming. I really didn't see that coming at all. Period. But um. Um, the debate, I kind of enjoy, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, the, all the singles matches were really great. Randy Orton and Big Show, I thought it was really good. Um, and I would like to end this uh, or review by saying, "Where's the Funkasaurus? Where'd he go? Why did he go into hiding? Is he extinct now? Bring him back." We need the Fungosaurus. So, on that note, I'll, I say to you, the WGS TV viewers and subscribers, what were your thoughts on Monday Night Raw? What were your ratings? You know, do you kind of agree with everything I said when it comes to the Cena, Kane, Ryder, Eve scandal, I guess we can call it? You know, you know the two ways to respond, you know, in the comment section below or in a video response. And don't forget, if you liked everything I had to say in this Raw review, be sure that you hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already. And uh, also, very quickly, if there's a wrestling topic you would like me to make a video on and, and have a discussion about, be sure you go directly to my YouTube channel page and submit it there. And don't forget, you, uh, for the topics that are up there, be sure you vote. So I really want to get you guys, you know, involved in my channel. You know, that fan interaction. That's going to be quite important to me. So with that being said, I'm Double B Billy Boudreaux saying thank you very much for watching.